Week 11 in the NFL is behind us. Believe it or not, we're getting ready for week number 12. Jim <laughs> Feist joining me, of course, here on ProLine and the R Lads Football Network. So uh, hopefully if you uh, enjoy these videos, you can catch them on both of those platforms. Uh, Jim, how's it going? You had a pretty good week last week. Well, I tell you what, you know, the crazy, it's a crazy game. I mean, I had a good week the previous week, and then I hit Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I wasn't 0 for three days, but I, I was like 1 and 4, 1 and 5. You know, it's like in, in three days, it's a nightmare. I said, this, I've got to stop this. And then Thursday, Friday turned out 2 and 1, and 3 and 1. It was something like that. And then Saturday came, and I was 9. And one. And then Sunday, I was eight and two. So that's so those two days alone with seventeen and three, which is yeah. like, you know, okay. You can't you do better than that. The, you you live for those kind of days, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't happen often. No. I mean, everybody's out there. All the bullshit out there, you know. They say it. <clears throat> oh, we hit ninety percent. We <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah. Occasionally, you can do that. Yeah, but you're not going to do it over a long period of time. I mean, yeah. the best people in this business, if they're doing reasonable volume, you're probably looking at 58 to 62 percent for That's the best players. Now, yes. if you're only doing small volume, you can hit high percentages because you're being very selective. Now, yep. but it's, but but usually those kind of people and their customers are very large players, like somebody that's going to pop in a six figure bet, which yeah. in the old days, a six figure bet was something uh, people, oh, that would happen occasionally. Now it's cough. It's often it happens all the time. Six figure bets. I mean, somebody walked in the other day to the casino here and bet a million dollars on Paul to be Tyson, a million, a million dollars. That's when I you mean, have money to waste. Well, yeah, you, you know, that's uh, people, work a lifetime to get a million this guy pops it down on one a fight i yeah. mean it's but you know, what was that so his vig was what 1.8 no i think he did 140 at that time okay it, it was very cheap actually at that point but it went up it, as the fight goes on went on it would to me got closer it, it started to go up because people realized a that the age was going to be a problem and then of course tyson had a knee issue yeah then, he would have been uh, better off to first before it got postponed. Yeah, he would have yeah. a better shot. Um, but yeah, still, I mean, you're not going to you're not going to beat somebody. Generally speaking, you're not going to be somebody that's 20, 30 years younger than you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Not, I mean, you're in Vegas, so I know. Growing up, there used to be so many awesome fights. Not just Tyson, but I mean, mm -hmm. boxing was king. I, I just, went to a lot. I went to a lot of them. Yeah, it's just that's a shame. I mean, what do you think is the biggest reason why the sport has been just decimated? It, but poor management, basically corrupt management. It's the same thing. It's it's a diff, It's the same thing, but different in horse racing. Horse racing should never have fallen apart, but the states yeah. got involved with taxing everything. And I mean, just on a wind pool, it's seventeen percent minimum tax pool and if you get on the exotics it goes up higher i mean you now now you not only have to pick what horse is going to win or win place or show or then you have all these exotics and the the taxes are so high you're not going to overcome it it's impossible it's impossible what is the so the taxes kick in at what point I, well it's on every everything i mean all for volume, how much all volume is taxed everything that's bad is taxed oh okay it gets, so... it gets worse it gets worse on the exotic bets. Got it. Okay. So, I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, well, it's just I know. It's a shame. I mean, I've been doing a horse racing show with John Hardoon, uh, who's the main handicapper with the very um, uh, popular uh, Raggers and Sheets. And we've been doing that. I can't even believe it uh, that we've been doing it uh, for about 12 years. It's amazing. And we've been doing it almost every week. So it's amazing that we've been uh, together that long, but it's it's a shame. It really is because um, it's still a sport, especially when you get great horses and during the Derby time and the Breeders' Cup, you just wish that it had better coverage. You, you just, you know, you see all the crap that's on television nowadays 
It's like you can't put you can't find a way to have like a weekly really good horse racing show every Saturday uh, on network television. You can't figure that out. I, I mean, it, it's a shame. So. All right. We're talking football. So week 11 is already in the books. And for the Dallas Cowboys last night, they're pretty happy about that. Uh, <laughs> well, there's a there's an issue where the owner, who is the general manager and the coach, I know they have a coach, but he's not the coach. <clears throat> the, the boss, he's he's calling the shots. He makes the drafts. He does all that. Uh, I mean, he he you got to give credit where credit is due. He made a lot of money and he bought the team, and it's with the biggest and most expensive Absolutely. franchise. But he has destroyed this team. Yeah. In 27 years, they haven't been to a championship. They're America's team, but I don't know what America we're talking about because they're certainly not capable. And and this is this is what happens when poor management comes into the game. Yeah. When you get the teams that are well-managed, well-owned, they're always on the top. They're always up there in the top five, six teams in the league. But but when you have the bad owners, the bad coaches, um, they just never turn anything around. It, it's it's it, it, it. I think it's the same thing in business. You know, unless you're really lucky, and you can be lucky. You can be bad at what you do and be lucky and still make a lot sure. of money. You know, I mean, uh, but but. It's if you if you're going to be long standing, you're going to have longevity. It's usually because you have good ownership, good management, yep. and it's not just luck. It's it's talent and skill. And and that's where like an organization like the Detroit Lions, um, they have got to figure a way. Now that they know the model, they have to figure a way to keep it because it took a long time for them to get to this point. And oh yeah. That, that, was a, that, was, that was a terrible franchise for yes ever. yes and the fact that and and the fun and the thing is is uh jeff risden who does a great job covering the lions for the detroit lions podcast on youtube uh i was interviewing him about two years uh prior to this point and uh each year you could tell because we would i would interview for the season we'd take a look at the management and you'd see Hey, you know what? They got them. They've hired some pretty smart guys in their front office. Like this is a really good front office. This could be interesting. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. And it starts right there in the front office. You've got to figure out a way to hire the right guys. And 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 look, hey, Detroit's got a, a female owner, and yet she just stays out of the way. She's smart. She knows who she, she's hired the right people to run the team. And just look at them. They are the right now. They are the best team in the NFL. No question. They they're they're extremely dangerous. They love playing for their coach. Coaches. The coach is an interesting character. I mean, I remember his first uh, news conference, and he break knees and all that stuff. And he left <laughs> it all. You can't say kind of stuff like that. But he is who he is, and uh, they love him. He makes. It's crazy decisions on the field sometimes, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Uh, but well, I'll tell you what, they're fun to watch. Now, yeah. what they did this past week was kind of – I think it was – what they did in that game just shows you how destroyed this league is parity-wise. Yeah, yeah. You, the, bottom, the bottom of the league, now, which now includes Dallas because of – poor management and injuries, the bottom of the league is awful, awful. Yeah. And, and this comes, and we started the season off with 16 dif different defensive and offensive coordinators with some head coaching, brand new head coaches and rookie quarterbacks. And it's a mess. And then you add on top of that, the injuries, uh, yeah, that's and, the shame. And, and I mean, I know you're a Jet fan, but not to pick on the Jets. But they started off with a good head coach in Salah. He no, he wasn't a great offensive coach. He's a great defensive coach. But there are defensive coaches that have done pretty well, and and then they fire him, and the defense fell apart. Yeah. Well, 
he wasn't the defensive court, but he had influence on it. Oh, without a doubt. Without yeah, a doubt. you know, and when he he left, it just immediately fell yeah. apart. And I mean, it was a desperation move to bring in Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he was, you know, it, it, even in Green Bay, he had a little bit of a problem. I mean, just a desperation move. You look at Russell Wilson came out of Seattle where he fell apart at the end of the season. That's right. And then he went to Denver, and it was a disaster under Sean Payton. And now he's at Pittsburgh. Yeah, he, they're winning, but he's not playing over the top greats. No, I mean that, he's got a great one, he's got a great that team. One interception, yeah. That one interception he threw at the end in that game. Oh, oh that was oh awesome. God, I, I can't I can't believe what the I hell know. he was thinking. I know. Jesus Christ. I mean, my dog could have done better than that. Yeah. You know it. Just, it, it was. <laughs> It, you know, so what are you, what are you doing? I, okay, we all make mistakes. We all, yeah. and we hope, and we all hope our mistakes aren't too costly in life, and in football, and in his, I mean, he's he is who he is. He had a great career. He's still going, and they're still winning. But it's Tomlin. It's yep. Tomlin. Whatever that man is doing, yep. it, even with the craziest and the poorest offensive coordinators and yep. the poorest and, and, and quarterback. He just knows how to grind out victories. Is yep. he going to win the Super Bowl? Probably not. But you know, but, wow. but you got to give him credit for God's sake. Yeah. And Lamar Jackson's got to think when he th goes to sleep at night and he thinks of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He must yeah. have it. It must be a nightmare because he can't find a way to beat them. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Well, that's the thing with. Uh, it's interesting about that game too because uh, uh, a little bit later on. Fields comes in and he slides <laughs> early. And now uh, I don't know what to make of that because it's like, on one hand, I'm wondering if it's these kids today, they think now they're being smart. Like I'm going to do, so I'm going to show everybody how smart I am by sliding here and, and doing it this way. Or is it just, they're just dumb. And it's like, why? Or is it, they're not tough enough. Like, what are you sliding for in that situation? I'm not sure exactly what was going on in his mind, but it's like, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> if they don't get a first down there because he slid early. Yeah, and it's like the only plays in the game, and you think that, you know, he, I, who the hell knows? I mean, it was stupid. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, you got to remember something. These are – athletes are different than other people that have to have to make a living. Of with course, other, yes. Of school. They're, yep. they're they're bigger, stronger, faster. They've been admired their entire lives because of their talents. And sometimes it's just like anything. It's a, a beautiful woman. It, she doesn't have to develop her personality because yeah. she walks into a room and the whole place changes. You know, so it's not that's not an indictment on everybody. It's just it it's the true. A lot of the things you get for free in life cost you the most. And yeah. I mean, somebody told me that a long time ago and it's true. When you have something, when it's so easy for you in one direction from one aspect of your life, you don't feel any need to develop anything else about your life. So. And that's why the, when, the, when, when you get that combination, when you get that athlete with the smarts, that's when those guys stick out. And that's when you get, the really truly special ones. Peyton, uh, My Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. Yeah, sure. You know, they just shows you something. Even. You know, I mean, yeah. It, you, you got, you know, th these people are not only athletic, super skilled, but they're also extremely smart. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and and besides Manning, you mentioned Brady and, and I just mentioned Mahomes and, and Brady and Mahomes. Brady goes in what? The sixth round. Mahomes goes mid to late first round and it's like but it's because you know again you may have the smarts like a brady or the 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 moxie that mahomes has but the nfl is so uh they're, they're so preoccupied with you know how did you run how did you test you know what kind of arm strength do you have this that and the other thing and then how many quarterbacks under that under those types of scouting reports have just been complete disasters. I mean, just look at, again, Anthony Richardson right now. Not that he won't potentially turn into a good quarterback. But, one but day. The, two week, the two weeks off 
helped him. Sure. He was hit, he had some 10, 15 yard passes, which he was never able to do. He had some long passes. He ran the ball well. That helped somehow when he tapped out in that one game and says, I'm tired. The rest of the team looked at him and said, Who the hell are you kidding? We're all tired. Yeah. You know, I mean, that was that was the most ridiculous thing. Now, can he grow up from that? Will he change, or was it just like a, a one game turnaround? You know, it's 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 wild. It it oh. just it's just wild. That's how tough it is to handicap the NFL. That's the whole idea because we don't know. We don't know if this is a one a one off. We don't know if he's going to come out next week and throw four interceptions. Uh, that's the great thing about it. Uh, and uh, every once in a while, we get great matchups like last week, and we had the Chiefs and the Bills. And the Chiefs, uh, in a way, if you throw out all of those trends that we talked about, and there were so many of them that sided with Kansas City regarding – not just how great they are under Andy Reid as a dog, but also uh, I, re I remember seeing in, in Mark's Coffee Club email the day after uh, there was a stat about defending Super Bowl champions that are dogs or something like that. Uh, I forget what it was. And they had gone undefeated. So that all of those just went away. But besides that, it was really predictable after the way the Chiefs had been playing recently that they were vulnerable. That they were well, going to get beat. There was there was another issue there too, but Buffalo has now beaten them four out of five times the last five times in the regular season. In the regular season, so they they are very capable and the one team in the league that has been able to beat them. Yeah. Now and then you have their their quarterback Allen, who at this point is playing much better than most quarterbacks in the league. Oh yeah, big strong guy. And he took it on his shoulders, and it was important for them to win that game. And they have been winning regular season games against them, and they're having a good season. And, you know, bottom line, let's take a look at them. I mean, when you look at how lucky – I lost with the Chiefs in the game. But it was close at the end. And if he doesn't get that touchdown right there, yeah. and they, they go for – you know. It's it it could go either way. Absolutely, so it wasn't. It's like sometimes that one decision, one play. That's it. it. But but bottom line is this: you are seeing some regression from Mahomes. Yeah. You are seeing regression from the team. They've had issues at the wide receiver position with injuries the last two years. Yeah, they're making up for it. I mean, they're so well coached on defense and offense, and the talent that they have. When they got and you got the 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 Kelsey thing with was Swifty and I mean look God bless you you had a great career you've got a great relationship everything's good but bottom line is that's taking away from his efforts on the football field when you're doing 15 commercials a week sure. and you're traveling the world to be at concerts and life is you know the the balancing out of your life we still all of us only get 24 hours a day okay so no matter how rich you are, to what you still only get twenty four hours a day. Yeah. You got to do something with it. Yeah, you know. And as he gets older, and it, it, so yeah, there's regression. There's regression with the team. There's regression with the players. I mean, you, you got the billion dollar quarterback where you gave him five hundred million. Now he's made investments. He's probably well, well, well worth over a billion. So they have the incentives, the motivations. Everything changes in life as life goes on. So. It's not unusual. I don't, at, from what I'm seeing, that so far, I don't see Kansas City doing, I don't know if Kansas City or, or San Francisco will even make the Super Bowl this year. And I thought well, that one of them, I thought one of them would. I'm now not sure I'm, San Francisco is making playoffs. It, well, they have a problem because they're in a division out there with four teams, three other teams. And, and if they don't win that division, and they, they may not even come second. So, no, they probably won't make the playoffs. You, it, it's the way things are going. Uh, and the big game this week with Arizona and Seattle is huge. Oh, I mean, that's yeah. That's a huge, huge game. Well, they're going to be huge the rest of the season because, again, this is what's awesome about the scheduling is that the division teams are going to play each other now a lot more. Uh, yeah, and, and that division, I mean, the worst team is 5-5. Five and five. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, three three of them are at five and five. Yeah, and one and one is at six and four, and he and that the Cardinals are now favored at Seattle by a point. I don't know if that's the 
a, a, a good move or not. I mean, the yeah, Seattle can beat them, but but it's it's a toss up. It, it's there's no there's no big advantage there. Well, Seattle's just popped up as a one, but this is draft. This is draft king. That's, that's so just one place. Could be a, yeah. Start so looking at the board. I'm looking way. at 13, 14 lines here. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's there's as many favorites of Cardinals favorite as there are the other side, but. It's, so let's um, uh, take a look at the playoff picture now, starting in the AFC and uh, Chiefs and Bills and then Steelers. So you got those top three. Who do you think? Think the Bills are going to end up as the number one seed, especially since they now have the tiebreaker over the Chiefs? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Hmm. And now the Steelers, by the way, with that win, the Steelers now have a – Game and a half lead, which is really two because of the, the the tiebreaker, even though they play again. So that was very important. And there's Denver winning again. And I got to tell you right now, I, I I honestly think the playoffs were already set in the AFC. I think you I think those seven teams are in. I, I don't see any of these teams here. I think the Bengals might be able to do it. The Dolphins have an easy schedule that will help them. But I just – I don't know. I don't see – I definitely don't see the charge. Chargers are only going to get better. The Broncos are the only susceptible team. But you tell me. You think the Broncos are going to hold on? Or do you think one of these other teams here, the Bengals, the Dolphins? You got, well, you got to you got to be afraid of the Chargers. Also. Well, no, I'm saying they're already in. I'm saying okay. which teams are, are, are going to – who do you think is going to be the last team in in the AFC? Denver or the Colts, Dolphins, or Bengals? Um, because Denver right now has a game. There's no way the Colts are getting into the postseason. Forget they're not good enough. Dolphins I'd say, have the easy I'd say schedule. probably. I'd say the Dolphins have have the, the a, a pretty good advantage at this point because they're if as long as the two can stay healthy. And of course, you have the issue with with the wide receiver with the, that that wrist injury that he has. It is causing a problem. But they have um, they have a pretty soft schedule going forward. Yeah. And, well, and the Cincinnati that gets the buy. And, the, and, the right and they're also in a very easy division. Yes. I mean, there's nobody in that division except the Bills. Yeah. Um, the, Miami. The the, the bank. The, it's a shame about the Bengals because, quite honestly, I think Joe Burrow might be the number one or number two quarterback in the league. I mean, he is just incredible. And with that offense that they have, that's unstoppable. But they're they're totally mismanaged. The coach. Um, the, their defense is horrible, um, and and I mean yeah, it's surprising though that the defense has gotten bad because the coordinator's been there the whole time. You know he they better. I don't know what I don't know what, I don't know what the hell happened to their defense, but they yeah. can't stop anybody. But that yeah. but Joe Joe Burrow is absolutely incredible. Uh, he is absolutely incredible, and with those receivers and. That that the the, the uh, running back that that replaced the starter Moss, I mean, he, it's Brown, I think his name is. Um, they're just incredible. You can't stop that team. What they're I, I give the Chargers credit for being able to stop them in the first half of that game, but it was remarkable. You don't stop that team. It, that's too. It it kind of reminds me of the old Charger team when they had Dan Fouts. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't you couldn't stop them. I mean, if Fouts was one of the best quarterbacks that ever played the game, you yeah. never hear about him as being because they never could win because they couldn't stop. They 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 score forty five and give up forty eight. I mean, yeah. you know, like it's kind of like this team. It's, it's the same thing. Um, yeah. But anyway, it is what it is. It's, we're heading down the stretch. We got eight more games to go, oh. and, and there's a lot of meaningful games. I, mean, I do I do want to kick this off. We should talk about the Thursday game. Um, this is Cleveland. It's uh, the weather is going to be in the 30s or 20s. Uh, it's going to be sleet or, or snow. Oh, okay. Because it's so cold, it's not going to be rain. The wind can be anywhere from 15 to 30, and we don't know that. And we're still 48 hours away from kickoff, or a little bit more than 48 hours. And but that game, that team, that stadium at the present that they're going to move it. But right now they play right on the lake and you get that lake effect. So when you have, <laughs> when it's bad there, it's bad. So 
if you could see a, a game that's 10 to 7 or 10 to 6 and not you're not able to even kick a field goal or an extra point because of the wind or the field conditions, those kind of things are possible there. The game opened 44 down to 35 and a half. It's probably going to go lower. Wow. Uh, this is uh, what I'm telling people to do is you might take a lead on the under. You might get stuck with it. Like if you're a $5,000 better, you might bet 500 on the under. Try to get yourself a 36 or 36 and a half if you can. You've missed all the good numbers, but they're not coming back. They're done. Yeah. So we're looking at reality. But you might get stuck with a bad number because if the weather gets worse, the, the line could drop into the 20s. But in it could be a great in-game betting game because when you're watching it and – you see what's going on with the wind and the way the ball is moving. You, I mean, sometimes you're going to kick the ball; it's going to go back over your head. If, yeah. Uh-huh. If the wind, if the wind is that bad, so you you can see that. And of course, you got, you know, if if Jameis Winston's going to throw it all over the lot, Wilson's going to he can throw bombs. But when you when you have that kind of weather, those long passes are not going to work, and you're not going to no. be able to kick field goals. Lots and, of running. You know, you notice in September. Everyone was hitting 55, 60 yard field goals. Now they're missing 20 and 30 yard field goals. It's it just, I'm talking about across the league. Sure. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, see, uh, the, the Bengals should have won the game the other night, except their field goal kicker missed two easy field goals. And he's a good kicker. Yeah. Well, not anymore. <laughs> just like Tucker. Tucker well, missed those field goals. They, 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 it's like a golf swing. You lose your golf swing. Your timing, your rhythm, you know, everything goes off. It's its a, its a very delicate balance. And um, when you lose it, you lose it. You know, I'm actually surprised when I saw the line uh, come out of the game. And, and, and then I realized, like you said, the weather is definitely a big reason why it's tough to take the game because there's so much luck that goes into one of these weather games. That's why when you're the underdog – Hey, bring out the weather, baby. It's it's the great neutralizer. Uh, and so the Browns, you know, if this was a perfectly weathered game where it was sunny, no weather issues, I'd be jumping all over the Steelers. But that's just now, I mean, but I would guess the Steelers would probably be closer to a five-point favorite, don't you think, if the weather wasn't no, involved? Well, I disagree with that because this is probably Cleveland Super Bowl. And they're two hundred miles, two hours away. From well, I mean, didn't we hear last it's, week it's that Jameson Winston's most, returning to most, New Orleans, it's the and they're all going to play for him, and they play like well, crap? Well, yes and no. Um, you got to remember something: the, the, the New Orleans opened up this season with two monster wins. Then they got some injuries, offensive and defensive, and Carr was out, and they're not that bad, <laughs> you know, in Cleveland. They, they, you know, they're hit and miss. They, but they did put up a lot of yardage. And Wilson can, Wilson can hurt you. He can hurt. He can hurt you, and you can hurt them because he's that kind of a player. But, but uh, this is this was this will be Cleveland's Super Bowl, and it may be the last game that they actually really attempt to win. Okay, uh, and they, uh... because it's it's their hated rival, two hours away by car. Um. And uh, they would like nothing better than the chalk up a victory against the hated Steelers. Believe me, they are the hated Steelers in Cleveland. They hate them. Yeah. And this is the game they're going to step up if they can. So, you know, they're well, going to put I mean, the yeah, effort in. Do, do, hmm? you, do you bother touching games, point spread games, when the weather is going to be like this? Well, yeah, I'll take advance. I'll take advances on on games like this. Of course, I will, because if you look to arbitrage the game. I mean, you try to you try to get a good line, and and sometimes you try to get a good middle. I mean, I you know, last I know people last night that had money line bets on Houston and took and took eight with uh, Dallas, and it didn't well, work I'm out. Talking about the weather. Well, that, okay, weather injuries, whatever the case is. No, no, I'm yes. talking about like because the weather is can, gonna, well, the weather's yes. going to be some factor that you're okay betting on a team when you know that the weather is going to just come into play. It's going to screw things up. There's going to be potential turnovers, 
And this is important because there are people out there like me that I, I'm not touching this game because I'm, I, I'm not going to leave my money out there to chance. I've already done it, Greg. Greg I've, well, why I've is that again? I've already, why. I've, already take, I've already bet the under in this game. No, 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 no. The point spread. Oh, the, the, not the total. Well, it depends on what the point spread. If it's a meaningful point spread, then I'm going to probably, in a, in a game where there's bad weather, mm -hmm. I'm going to probably lean to the team that runs the ball the best. Okay. Okay. And you, most of the time that will probably be, I'll be looking at the home team because they're used to the field conditions. They play okay. there all the time, et cetera. That's good. In, in this particular game, there's not enough of a spread to really worry about it. Yeah. But, um, How about I, the money line? Well, I'm on low point spreads. You know that I'm a money line player. But I, How about if, the dog if side? If, the, if there's a dog in the game, I will only take the points. Okay. Only, I, I just don't lay points when they're small numbers. I don't want to win the game 25-24, lay in two. Yeah. I, sure. I want to win the. I want to win my bet. It's. I treat it? it like. I treat it like a baseball game. I'm betting the money line. Yeah. If the if it's the favorite. And and how about the dog then? If you if you like the Browns, would you go with the money line at plus one sixty, or you'd rather have those points? Uh, if I'm a five hundred dollar better, I'd probably bet four hundred dollars plus the points and a hundred dollars on the money line. Okay. All right, so that's the game, by the way, because we're going to come back later this week and talk about uh, week 12 in the NFL, but we won't be on the air uh, before this game, most likely. Uh, we're probably checking in on Friday this week. Um, next week, we'll have a little bit different schedule, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We're going to start talking college football as well later this week, most, most likely on Friday. But we definitely wanted to get that game in uh, in case uh, we are not on the air, Jim and I before then. Um, so again, that's the only game we really need to worry about at this point. Let's go back to uh, this, the playoffs and what happened last week. By the way, the Bengals, I was looking at, let's keep this in mind. The Bengals lost that game week two to the Chiefs when they had that fourth down play when Kansas yes. City got that penalty. On the, uh, you know that, And Chiefs benefited those first two weeks, we have to remember, uh, last week. I mean, earlier this year, week two and week three, or else they could have started one and two. Um, then Cincinnati lost those two games to Baltimore. Uh, matter of fact, the first game against Baltimore, speaking about the field goal kicker, I'm not sure it was his fault, but I think it might've been the holder, but bottom line is they missed that game winning field goal goes into overtime, Baltimore wins. Um, and then they lose to Baltimore again when they went for two and that didn't work out. So those are two games you would think you'd split that and they lost both of them. So that's the they've kind been, of, they've, they've been very unlucky. Very unlucky. Yeah. So right there, the, the, if they're having a good season, they win all of those games, and you're looking at them at maybe seven and four or eight and three instead of four and seven. So the Bengals should definitely be in the playoffs, but they're not going to. I don't think they're going to make well, they, it. They but. got the bye, and that's important. So they get to kind of mentally regroup, and you know they know. See, it's unlike it's different when you're the Jets and you're coming off a bye, but when you're the Bengals <laughs> coming off a bye, you know. Look, this group's won before, this entire coaching staff, all these players, we've won before, we've done it. Let's just, you know, we, we know what we could have done. Let's just handle business the second half of the season. They're probably going to have to win out. Their first game is going to be at home against Pittsburgh. But that's then not, after that. That's not easy. But then that after that, easy. if they can win that game, if they can win that game, they get Dallas, Tennessee, Cleveland. So they if they can, can beat four, Pittsburgh, yeah. they can go on a four-game winning streak to come out of the bye. And then their last two games are against Denver and Pittsburgh. So Well, they're not in good shape. They're not not as good, good as the Dolphins with that schedule. No. Dolphins yeah. got the easy schedule. I, Dolphins I, I get to know, play the I Jets know, I don't know when we're are, – are we going to do all the games today? The Lions? No. Okay. No I want to I wanna point, I wanna point this out. The Giants have sat um, – they're sitting down uh, Danny Dimes. What the hell is his name? Jones. Jones. Yeah. Okay. It's probably a contract issue because if they play him and he gets hurt, they're going to owe him $23 million or something. But I think they're going to exit from him. And they're, top, they're starting Tommy DeVito, which I'm not giving them much of a chance. The Buccaneers coming in five-and-a-half-point favorite, 41-and-a-half. 
Buccaneers have some offensive line injuries. Uh, the wide receivers we have to check on, but Evans might be a, a yeah. problem. But the Giants aren't very good. DeVito isn't very good. No. But but he, his, her, his mom cooks for the whole team, so they like that. Okay. Good, good Italian food. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, but you're looking at that game. The Buccaneers are five and a half, 41 and a half. So that's a big change. Detroit, after their monster game, they're seven and a half. The Colts, I think the Colts are probably going to bounce back. Richardson, I, I liked what he did in that game. I just want to point out if there's anything else on the card, even though we're not doing every game. Uh, Washington, 10 and a half over Dallas. I, I don't know if Washington's ready to be a big favorite, but this year, this is interesting. I believe, and I, I may be 100, I could be wrong here. I think there's been four or five double digit favorites in the NFL this year, and they've all won and covered. And I think three of them might have been Detroit Lions. <laughs> it could be, but I mean, here's Dallas is done. They're, they're embarrassing. And, yeah. and the Washington is coming off some losses. But the they're coming kid, off a bye. There's a, they're coming off a bye. The young kid is regressing a little bit because he's young and that's normal. Minnesota. Here's an interesting game at the bears. The bears played better last week. They got a new offensive coordinator. They've, they've, they've shortened the pass routes for yeah. um, Williams. Yeah. He's running run the ball a little bit. Keep this in mind. Minnesota is an indoor team. They're playing at the Bears. The Bears could have the same kind of weather Cleveland's going to get. However, the weather front might move out by then. So we don't know because the, the Cleveland game's Thursday. This is Sunday. So we don't know yet, but that's something to consider. You got a double digit favor with the Chiefs on the road, 11 at the Panthers. Um, by the way, just, it looks uh, like the weather uh, is going to be a lot more warmer again on Sunday in Chicago. Okay. Okay. Um, but other and than that. You got another double-digit no, favorite here. We're not, we're, not, we're not doing every game. We talked a lot about different stuff, but I wanted to point some of that stuff out. All right. And again, we're going to go over all these games uh, and look out for Jim's video. Jim is going to have his early observation video, which actually you're going to record later today, I believe. Um, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So Jim later will today. go over the games and just give you a brief little uh, tidbits here and there about each game, the lines and so forth. So, so uh, keep an eye on that uh, here on uh, over on the ProLine channel, of course. Um, and uh, so now taking a look at the uh, NFC. Well, what is what is it? What exactly a pro line? The pro line when you go to YouTube and type in pro line, what do you type in? Well, right now uh, we don't have it set, but when we're when we have it set, I'm just waiting for Mark to give final approval. So when Mark gives final approval, and I think he will, it's going to be pro line TV, uh, and that's how you can find us. So hopefully, when in I the next couple some, days. I mean, we we I did some research the other day. It was Jim Feist pro line sports pro line yeah. TV. Over the years, and we've you know, I've been around six decades, I don't know how long pro line YouTube's been around, but over the years, we used a lot of different pro line addresses, and that was probably not the smartest thing in the world to do, but we didn't know what the hell we were doing then, you know, <laughs> since, since it was the beginning of, of all of this social media stuff. And uh, but I saw a video of me in 1985 on where on, on Jim Feist, Jim Feist, uh, pro line sports. 85 you know what i was young i was handsome i had hair and it wasn't gray it's amazing <laughs> and i had a suit on which i never wear <laughs> was that the usa today show no it was it was my own show oh, oh okay so that, the usa okay. today show wasn't we, your own show yeah, that was pro that was probably the usa today show which we were on there for 80, 36 years yeah yeah okay yeah all right. So, so they, it's been it's been a that I couldn't believe it. Eight, 1985. Well, that's why I said I'd like to be able for us to find some of those old uh, the old footage of your shows, and I'd like to put them on our channel. Well, so, you go in there, you'll find them. They're there. And yeah, and well, most, I mean, I'm talking the old ones, the USA like 30 year old ones. Well, yeah. You but if you can't find them on YouTube, I don't know where. Unless you can go to USA and get in their archives, I don't know. Probably. Where yeah. You know, it's. Anybody yeah. knows how, let us know. All right. 
Uh, <laughs> NFC, Detroit, they're definitely going to end up as the first seed. They're just too good right now. And the funny thing is, is they're doing oh, there's, this. There's one, there's one team that's dangerous in the NFC, and they're coming around. And but Don't say uh, the Eagles. I am going to say the Eagles. No. Eagles. They're dangerous. They're dangerous because of their ability to run the football. And running the football is 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 critical. I know a couple of years ago, oh, running backs, you shouldn't pay them. They're not worth any bullshit. It's about it's time. About, it needs to come back. Give me, give me a strong offensive line, a good running game, and yep. a reasonably, reasonably good quarterback. Not doesn't have to be great quarterback, sure. just a reasonably good one. And then a good defense, a good, I mean, running the ball is key, man. Yep. That's that's one of the reasons that the Bengals can't win because when they do get in a position to control the game, they can't because they don't run the ball well enough to control the game. And it's all burrow dropping back, throwing it 40, 50 times. And you can't do that. You yeah. need to be able to, you need to be able to run the clock without putting your team in danger of turning it over. And well, then the question is, is even though Zach Taylor's had a lot of success there, I mean, we're talking the Bengals and I know, uh, sure. I, I know Marvin Lewis had a lot of success as well, mostly regular season, but Zach has had the most success the Bengals have had in the postseason. He just has. Now, look, he's got Joe Burrow. So we know that's the reason. But do you just say, look, we're not, we're never going to reach a certain level because this guy is always going to throw the ball 65% of the time. It's never going to change. Do we have to find a new coach? Well, it's not that he's a bad coach, but obviously the defense needs help, number one. Oh, yeah, sure. Num number two, that offensive line needs to be able to not only pass block, which they're not that great at doing, by the way. Burrow is always getting hit. Always. But he's, but he's a magician. He, he, he's, he's really good, <laughs> really good. But they need to be able to run the ball. They have yeah, but he's not going to run it. That's the problem. Zach yeah, Taylor well, always maybe, will throw maybe, the football. Maybe if maybe if he had an offensive line that actually could run block and open some maybe, holes, he maybe. might run the goddamn ball. Maybe you know. So it, a lot of times he's just going to his strength, which is throwing. Sure. I, I, I'm not saying he's a bad coach. Yeah, I don't I'm think he saying, is. I don't. I don't. I, I don't. You can't. He's had. He's had enough success to not call him a bad coach. He's not a bad coach. I think he just has bad tools. Especially, like you said, on that offensive line. They have not fixed that offensive line in years. So, um, all right. And then you've got the Cardinals. Because the Cardinals could be anywhere from three uh, to, what, five, I guess, depending on whether they end up in first or second. A long way to go in the NFC West. Falcons had a chance. See, the Falcons are are letting Tampa Bay hang around. The problem is that they've got the two game tiebreaker on Tampa Bay, so I just I find it hard to believe Tampa Bay is going to be able to pass the Falcons. Unfortunately, that's me because I'm rooting for Tampa Bay. Uh, and then you got Minnesota at eight and two. I can't believe the Vikings are an eight and two football team. They got to be the most. I mean, if you really think about it, I mean, come on, the Bengals are four and seven, and the Vikings are eight and two. Wow. Well, okay. When when if you compare the overall teams, the Vikings are a much better team than the Bengals. But if you look at the offenses, the Bengals are way better than than the Vikings. But the Vikings have a have a defense. Yeah, Vikings and, definitely. And, and they and they can they they're fundamentally fundamentally a better team. But the the Bengals offense the Bengals offense is probably the best in the league next to the Lions. Yeah, but. But when you look at their defense, it's it's a disaster. Packers, see, we talked about this last week that how the Packers needed to kind of regroup after the after the way they ended going into the bye. That they were just even when they were winning games, it wasn't really convincing. And then they lose that blowout to the Lions. They go into the bye, and here they got the Bears struggling mightily. Everybody's criticizing the Bears. They've won 10 straight, straight up and against the spread against the Bears, and they should have lost the game. They blocked the kick like the Chiefs. They get – again, they win another ugly game, and I don't know. There's something about the Packers right now. They just haven't been able to kind of pick it up. Now, look, they got time. All they got to do is get hot at the right time at the end of the season. 
but they're not playing as well as we thought that they were going to play so far. Well, you're right about that. There have been some issues. They've had some injuries. <clears throat> you know, Jordan Love, he is a turnover machine. He makes a lot of mistakes. And let's just say he's careless. He throws the ball. Yeah. He's very talented. He's a great throwing motion, throws a great ball. But he makes really, really bad decisions. And, and I mean, even in the playoff game last year with the cross-body, cross-the-field throw that got intercepted, that's a, that's a Brett Favre decision. I mean, you know, it, it, no, it, it, you're not going to win unless you can curtail your leader uh, from making really dumb sure. decisions. I can think and he, can do that. he is doing you know? that. Because remember last year, he was really erratic the first half of the season. I mean, everybody was nervous about the way he was playing. And then what happened? Second half of the season, he got on fire. So yeah. that's you what know, you got to Sometimes success goes to your head. Sometimes it does, especially the money. He's making all the money now. But yeah. they've got an advantage. They they can turn to Josh Jacobs and they can run the football. So that's really been – that's the why the Packers, totally, the, Packers are, the Packers are a good team. Yeah. They're not a championship team, but they're a good team. Well, not right now they're not. Nope. And there's <clears> Washington. <throat> and then you've got the really good teams in the NFC on the outs. The Rams oh. – Seattle, San Francisco at five and five, and the Bucks at four and six. You got f- these four teams that are going to try to catch one of these teams, and I don't know. By the way, I got to I got to point this out. The Commanders' head coach is Quinn. He yes. was with he was with Dallas last year. Yes. Commanders have the new young quarterback. Dallas is without their quarterback. They're not looking good. They have not played well. And guess who plays who this week? Yeah. Dallas at Washington. I'll tell you, Dan Quinn would probably love to stick it to Dallas. Okay. Well, and I'm, I'm not when saying – you're giving 10 points, you know, that's it, it, important. It, it, takes, it takes a lot to be able to win and cover those kind of numbers. Yep. At but I'll tell you what, that is that is a side narrative that I think you should consider. Okay. When, I mean, they're coming off losses, the commanders. They're still in the running for that division. And, you know, there's a possibility that the Eagles could go out and lose to the Rams. Sure. So this is a very, very important game for the commanders <laughs> oh, yeah. to have a shot at that division. Oh, you can't lose to the Cowboys. Come on. Well, That's anybody can lose anybody can lose to anybody if you're sloppy and you're not focused. No. But coming <clears throat> off the, coming off two losses with Quinn at the Quinn at the helm, I got to think they're going to come and try to kill him and they just might. And you boy, know, I'll tell you. we talked about it last week that there are certain teams at this type of season that you need to take advantage of when you can tell that they're just they don't have it anymore that they're just not listening to the coach and all of that. And sure enough, some of those teams, again, are not responding. Even the Browns, I think, we have to put that them in that category. Not Maybe not this week's game, but generally, like you said, Super Bowl this week, after that, they, they could just die the rest of the year. Uh, I'm really shocked, though, because Kevin Stefanski sure looked like he had figured it out. Cleveland had gotten their, they have their head coach. They've got their, say what you want about it, but they've got their analytic system here in Cleveland. They've got their analytic front office and they've figured it out. Uh, and then this happened. So now they're also the team that drafted Johnny Menzel number one and, and, and signed Watson to a big contract after 27 charges. Of well, I'm talking about Stefanski. I mean, yeah, but, yeah, but it's, it, it's also the coach has got to get along with the owner. So, and when you have an owner that does shit like that, you might not want to be there too long. Okay. You know, you know, that's, uh, you know, he, he made, he made them play Watson every week and everybody knew Watson wasn't capable. That okay. wasn't Stefanski's choice. He was just mouthing what he was told to say. So, 
No, there could there could be a lot of a lot of behind the scenes agenda going on over there. Well, that I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I interview. I got to get an I got to book an interview then with uh, my Cleveland uh, insider, um, and uh, and and find out. That's uh, I'm going to do that. Okay. You know, last last week I've got to say this, and this this sometimes these things don't make sense. A couple of weeks ago, the Jets went to Arizona and they're favored on the road at Arizona. Yeah. I, could not, I could not understand that. And then this past week, Cleveland was favored at the Saints by the time game went off. And I'm saying, I'm scratching my head. How the hell are you favoring Cleveland at the Saints? They can't do anything right. They're favored there with cars back. I mean, what the hell is – and I'm scratching my head. What is there about this game I don't know? So I'm not smart enough to give out – the Saints in that situation, I'm saying, okay, there's something wrong. It doesn't make sense. If it don't make sense, it don't make sense. And they, they got smoked. <laughs> smoked. Yeah. I think it was I, – I think it was the whole Winston thing, returning to New Orleans. That's what I think. Well, that's, that's, that's strong. That's strong. Um, now, here's the interesting thing on that take. Okay, you got these two teams at the bottom that are going nowhere, the Titans and the Jaguars. But there's a big difference. The Titans are going to compete and keep an eye on them in the second half. I think they're going to be a good second half team that's going to because they got a young coach. They're 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 by, by the way, they got completely screwed against Minnesota like yeah. three times. Yep. They I did. mean, it was embarrassing. Um but well the league is the league is embarrassing when it comes to refereeing. Yes. Yeah. That was awful. Uh, but they're going to – that's going to be a bad team that's going to get a lot of points. They're going to fight hard each week. The Jaguars, on the other hand, as we <laughs> saw last week, they're done. Especially when Trevor Lawrence ain't, ain't in under center. So you got a problem with Trevor Lawrence. They do. Can, yeah, can, can, the question is, can this kid play at this level? Because he hasn't done it. He just has not been – now, I'll, I'll give him this. His coaching issues have been terrible. He's had way too many offensive coordinators teaching him game plans and all that. But he has not lived up to expectations at all. No. Nope. But they need to get rid of their head coach. They need a little bit more maturation. Pardon? He's maybe one of these kids, because he's still talented, that he's going to need more maturation, and possibly he's going to have to do it somewhere outside of Jacksonville. So – Yes. Uh, Raiders, another one of these teams that, you know, you get the feeling that even though I know they loved playing for Pierce last season, it's the same old trick. I mean, anytime you hire interim coaches that coach well at the end of the season, I, I hardly ever see it succeed the next season. Hardly yeah. ever. You're probably and, right. And, and it's happening again. And I, I just think the Raiders are this close from falling off a cliff. So keep an eye on that. You talked about the Giants. We already talked about the Cowboys. Forget about them. But the Giants, if they're going to go to Tommy DeVito like they're doing, they're done. I just wonder whether or not they're going to hold on to Dayball. Do you think they should? Actually, I think they should. I think I think he's a good coach. I think he just has wrong tools. They need to draft a quarterback. They need yeah. somebody. They don't have anybody on their roster they, they should be playing. So if you clear up the, the, court, the contract mess with uh, Jones – um, they might have enough room to build that franchise. It's possible. Uh, the Panthers, you know, they're going to keep playing hard as well because they got a young coach. Uh, so don't don't diss the Panthers at this point. That's it. Th those are the teams that you want to take advantage of. Maybe the Giants, the Cowboys, the Raiders, the Jaguars, the Browns after this week. So now, this week, after you might this catch week. you might catch you might catch the Vikings. In a nap, in this one, Bears could beat them. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, it's possible you get weather there. Possible. Well, and, again, right and, now it's and cloudy and fifty. And you could be taken over three, three, three and a half, four. Who knows? By game time, the Bears could beat them. Yeah. And as far as any of those other teams, uh, before we wrap up, uh, what do you think about? I mean, I know it's the Panthers, but when you get a team that. Hmm is undefeated for a long time and they lose there's always that next game that you keep an eye on because all of a sudden that 
that that that drive of trying to stay undefeated is gone, and you sort of lose something. Especially, it happens a lot in the NBA and hockey, the, the sports where you got a lot more games. You know, I love to jump against teams when they're on long after they're on long winning streaks in those sports because that next game they're just they usually lose. But you know, it's the NFL, it's the Chiefs, it's the Panthers. But I, I wonder whether or not the points might may not be the bad way to go. I wonder if the Chiefs might just be a little bit uh, off this week. But I don't know. Um, the Giants, we just talked about it. Yes. The Buccaneers, I think that's definitely the way to go. I think you're right. I think Washington, the Cowboys, maybe they blow them out. Here's a game that I think, like I said, I think Tennessee is going to give Houston a game. So I, I would agree with that, especially if Houston's going to be on the short week. Yeah. Uh, so that's eight right there. Denver, Tennessee, was, Tennessee was supposed to be a lot better this year. They just not not done it. But it, the, I guess the question there is Levis. Um, yeah, he certainly has the physical tools. Um, he is very prone to making mistakes. Can you coach that out of him? I don't know. But if he if he could stop making the mistakes, he has the physical tools to play. Yeah. It's, well, he's another young kid that really needs time. Like I remember when I heard about him a few years ago, the year before he was drafted, I remember somebody telling me, because we were, we were talking about next year's draft or something like that, and I heard someone telling me about Levis, and I go, "Who? Yeah, the quarterback for uh, Kentucky." I go, "I don't know what you're talking about." So I, I had to find out who the hell they were talking about, and then I go, "Oh, that guy, the guy from Penn State." I go, "Okay, why do you think this guy should be like a top what?" And I so obviously I started paying more attention to him, and it's like I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, this guy's not a top five yeah. quarterback. He needs time. You know, he's like you said, I think people just fell in love with what he has, all the little intangibles that you're looking for. Like we talked about before, the arm strength, the toughness, he's got all that, but he needs experience. And he's got the right guy. He's got Callahan. He's got the right guy. He's coming off just like Richardson. He had time off. He played pretty well last week. He didn't put up big numbers, but he improved. He made decisions quicker. He didn't turn the ball over like he had in the past. So I, I do think Will Levis has a shot to have a good second half, so keep an eye on that. Denver and the Raiders, another team that could just plunder. So keep. So I, I mean, Denver might be a good play this week. They're playing well, um, and I think that's it as far as the uh, the matchups with some of those really bad teams this week. Okay, and we're going to talk more about all of those games on Friday. So check back when uh, Jim and I will take a look at those games, and Jim will also go over all of the games with his final look on saturday night so jim so look out for those videos that come out on saturday night on proline on the proline channel we'll have a link in the description where you can find that out so whether once we figure out and we get the url all straightened out doesn't matter the link still works so check out the link it'll send you right to the channel that we want it we want you to check out uh and it's going to be uh smorgasbord of uh, nfl and college matter of fact jim and i are going to talk some college football for the first time on friday i'm looking forward to that jim and look for mark lawrence and i because we're also going to talk some college football on thursday we're going to go all around uh every conference in college football like we did last week and uh let you know what's going on as far as the bowls the playoff race and maybe even some of course big games coming up this week in college football so jim uh loved it enjoyed it We'll do it again on Friday. Absolutely. Great, great job, Greg. We'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.